Hey pros, Crystal here from Elite Hair Care USA. So my client today came in and said that she wanted to fix this style. So from the picture, that is what she wanted, but unfortunately that's not what she got. So today we are going to give her a relaxer, um, a corrective color, and we are also going to give her a nice rendition of that style, as close to that style as possible. So I started out by cutting her hair down. As I was cutting her hair, I did notice that there were some areas where um, I'll just say it was miscut um, or just not cut enough. Let's use that, that better term, not cut enough. Um, and then the hair on the top, I could see what the stylist was going for. I could see that they were trying to get to that direction and I, I kind of feel like they were maybe too afraid to cut a little bit too much off. And that's common, you guys. When you are a stylist um, and you're not really comfortable 100% in shortcuts, a lot of stylists get afraid to cut too much hair off the top and they end up leaving more hair up there. Um, basically, just not confident in the cut that they're doing. So me personally, um, I've gotten over that fear years ago. You guys know I love to cut. I also know the difference between a cut and a trim. But cutting is, is just a thing that I actually have a love for. So you bring me a short style, no problem. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm doing her cut, but I, I'm also making sure that I'm not aggravating her scalp because I know that I'm going to be doing a relaxer. Now for her relaxer, because I know she had um, previous color, I was very, very careful to not relax the crown of her head because I did not want to overlap on what may be permanent color. After asking her, I asked her, did the stylist use a color that came straight from the bottle or did she use something that had to be mixed together? And if she said mixed together, that tells me that the stylist used either a demi-permanent or a semi-permanent color. I'm sorry, a demi-permanent or a permanent color, not semi-permanent. Um, and that tells me that I need to be extremely careful when I'm relaxing because relaxer does not do well over permanent and sometimes demi-permanent colors. Now, after her relaxer, I wanted to go ahead and um, fix the color situation that we had going on. So the, the red that she wanted was not the red that she got. So today we're going to cover her grays. That's number one. But we're also going to correct that color and kind of get her to the deep wine slash burgundy that she was requesting in the picture. After her color, we went through and just finished out the details um, just to kind of clean up the haircut, anything that I possibly had missed. This is also another reason why I like to do preliminary cuts first, and then I go back and do the detailing. When you do preliminary cuts, it gives you an idea of the silhouette of the head. It gives you an idea of the anatomy of what your client already has worked was is already working with, so the anatomy of the previous haircut. And then it also gives you an idea and time to give your mind a break to make sure that you are not overcutting or undercutting. That's definitely something that I um, am big on when it comes on to haircuts. I like to take my haircut in steps because you'll get overwhelmed really, really quickly if you don't know um, basically where you are or what you're doing with, with the haircut. So once the cut is done, she's going to go under the dryer with our Elite Silk Wrap Foam, which is going to be the mold for her. And then we are going to go into the styling portion. Now, because she does have some thinning in the crown area, I couldn't go too heavy on the crown cut. But based on the style that she wanted, we were basically going to do like a graduated cut. So it's going to start slightly shorter in the in the back part of the crown and then it will get slightly longer in the face and also the picture that she brought it did have a little bit of bangs to it so that's another reason why I used the graduated cut where her bangs are a little bit longer um, and just a very small amount of bangs you guys not like a full curtain bang or a, a side part no and that's also where stylists can kind of get hung up because styles like that require you to know how to graduate that hair and not leave way too much hair because then you can't curl it or not have enough hair and not have that bang. So that's definitely important. Now the Elite Silk Wrap Foam can be found and all of the products actually that I used outside of the relaxer and color 
can be found at EliteHairCareUSA.com. And you guys know when it comes onto the mold, I, I say this all the time and I'm going to always say this. Make sure that your mold is nice and smooth. This is the foundation of your style. If your mold is messed up, you are going to work very hard to try to come back from a messed up mold. Now, when I say a messed up mold, meaning you molded the hair in the wrong direction, so you've already directionalized the hair, um, you didn't lay the hair nice and smooth, so now you have to go back and apply heat to smooth everything out. Um, some clients, you can't really get it nice and smooth like a relaxer because her relaxer is fresh, but in the instant where the client's relaxer is nice and fresh, you do want to make sure that your mold is right. If you are working with hair that is not freshly relaxed and it does have a little bit of kink to it, Definitely take your mold in stages and mold it as you go just to make sure that that hair lays down. Now, I'm using wrap strips to hold her hair in place because as you guys can tell, I see a little bit of texture in the back of the head and I wanted to correct that. So now she's actually dry and I am using the H2 Pro 7 tenths iron. Now, you guys have never seen this iron. This iron is the next step up from the three tenths of an inch. So this is kind of, it will be close to a one inch iron, but it's not a one inch. And it's also not a half inch. So it's in between a half an inch and a one inch iron. This iron is good for those of you that have slightly longer hair shortcuts and you don't really need it super skinny in regards to the iron and you don't need a one inch either <laughs> so you need that in between so this is your in between iron for those of you that are dealing with sh like i call it a pixie but it's a grown out pixie okay and it gives you the ability to just curl really really quickly it's it's good i'll tell you guys that um this was really one of my first times really getting into that iron and i really like it so then for my detail work which is on the sides and the back I'm using the H2 Pro 3 tenths of an inch micro. This iron is available on our website at EliteHairCareUSA.com. As you guys can tell, I've been using this iron forever, so I'm super comfortable. And this is my iron that I use for detailing and also to um, straighten out my client's hairline to make sure that everything is nice and smooth for the style that I'm doing for that day. Now, if you guys are new to my channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And please don't forget to also thumbs up this video. So trivia question, you guys know I've started this trivia question thing. If I'm doing a shortcut, can I skip the mold process? If my answer or if your answer is yes, tell me why. If your answer is no, tell me why. Thanks. All right. So I'm just going to go through and just kind of just comb her out, style her a little bit. And then I also used... Um, the volume that she had in the crown to her advantage by just kind of pushing that hair slightly forward. And then we use the rake to style the front of her hair. Now, the bang, of course, is something that she requested, which is fine with me. Um, I'm not a super fan of bangs with shortcuts, but it really worked for her. So that was perfectly fine. And then also, you guys, um, I want you guys to just kind of take note. While she has that volume going on right now, she is somewhat fine textured. So that's another reason why I did not relax her crown because I wanted that volume in the crown. But there are going to be times where when she relaxes her hair, it's going to be slightly flatter than we'd all hope for. Um, I can speak for this because I have fine textured hair just like hers. And I'm always wanting that volume and I do not relax the crown of my head very often. But I want you guys to um, watch the finished style evolve, which is a fairly impossible too long from here <laughs> don't forget to answer that trivia question and also as i said if you haven't already subscribed please do so and then if you're new to my channel and you want to purchase any of our products use code youtube 20 and that will save you 20 percent off at elitehaircareusa.com i hope you guys enjoyed the style thanks for watching